Let me now say a few words about using digital video on the internet. This is a little bit of a special case with digital video. Now in both the standalone projectors and movies, director movies will be playing back in web browsers. Director can handle digital video the same way that it handles all other media. Or you can stream the digital video by using QuickTime for or later. Streaming is the process whereby you download enough of the video to start playing. Playback will start before the entire digital video file has downloaded. This saves time for the user. They don't have to wait for the entire digital video file to download. You can also link the digital video to a URL. Then the movie begins to download and play the digital video when its sprite first appears on the stage. For the digital video cast member to stream, however, you must set its streaming property to true. You'll do that by selecting the digital video sprite there on the stage. Click on the QuickTime tab here in the Property Inspector and make sure that you have a check mark next to the Streaming option right there. You can also place cue points inside this QuickTime file using a video editor like Final Cut Pro. Now if the QuickTime file that you're streaming contains cue points that you want to use, you'll want to set the text track to be preloaded. You'll use a QuickTime editor again such as Movie Player Pro to do this. If you do not preload the text track, Director disables the cue point so it can stream the file without entirely downloading it first. You can also import a real-time streaming protocol or RTSP stream as a QuickTime cast member. The RTSP URL must end with the file name extension .mov. That's the QuickTime file extension. This will indicate to Director that it should be treated as a QuickTime stream. When you do use streaming digital video in a movie that will be distributed on the internet, you'll want to remember the following points. First, the video will begin to play immediately unless the cast members or sprites paused at start property is set to true or the controller member property is set to true. Remember, you'll adjust this. Probably the easiest way is to click on the video sprite and then here in the Property Inspector, click on the QuickTime tab and make sure if you want the movie to be paused to start, make a check next to the paused option there. Second, when digital video begins to download, the download continues until it's finished, even if the sprite no longer appears on the stage. You can use the percent streamed QuickTime sprite property to test how much of the media has been downloaded. This feature works with QuickTime videos only. For more information about this property, see the scripting reference topics in the Director Help panel. So this is another example where using Lingo scripting can really improve the performance and capabilities of your digital video performance in your Director movies. So with that, that'll wrap up this section of the tutorial on using digital video in Director 11. In this section, you learn how to import the various digital formats, how to play back your digital video, and how to work with the digital video on the score. You've learned how to play digital video direct to stage, as well as a little bit about using Windows Media, Real Media, and QuickTime. And these last two movies covered how to use DVD media content in Director, and some tips on using digital video on the internet.